These are this afternoon's top stories. Former Prime Minister Douglas's visa reportedly revoked in January 2015. St. Lucia celebrates World Consumer Rights Week of Activities and Israel's Prime Minister warns supporters he could be replaced. Good afternoon. Welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Monday, 16th March 2015. I'm Ebony Brandon. Now we take a look at the news developments in detail. The controversy surrounding the revocation of the diplomatic U.S. visa of former Prime Minister Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas continues as Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris appears to have confirmed the allegation. During a constituency meeting last week, Dr. Harris reportedly told the gathering that on January 14 this year, U.S. officials visited the Federation to inform Dr. Douglas that due to a number of concerns, his diplomatic visa would be revoked. The visiting U.S. officials are said to have stressed the fact that the timing of the visa revocation was not meant to deliberately coincide with the February 16 federal elections and was rather the result of a gradual process. It has been suggested that the United States took this course of action over concerns about the management of the St. Kitts Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program. This new turn of offense contradicts recent claims made by Dr. Douglas that the diplomatic U.S. visas were canceled after the election and following the cancellation of diplomatic passports of all former Labour Administration ministers by the new Unity government. Dr. Douglas's claim was further dispelled last week when Minister of Foreign Affairs Honorable Mark Brantley said that the Unity government had not cancelled the diplomatic passports of any former members of government. Brantley told local media that the usual procedure upon a change of government is that former ministers and others holding diplomatic passports would turn them in. New passports befitting their role as members of the opposition would then be issued. An annual week of activities focused on consumer rights officially began on Sunday. This year, the week focuses on the theme, helping consumers choose healthy diets. Minister of Consumer Affairs, the Honorable Lindsay Grant, launched the week with an te a televised address on Sunday. He explained the importance of helping consumers to eat healthily. Unhealthy diets are a major cause of heart disease, diabetes, and some forms of cancer which are on the rise, especially in low- and middle-income countries. These preventable diseases come at an astronomical cost to human life, people's livelihoods, the health service sector, and jeopardize our standard or sustained development through the loss of vital human capital. Minister Grant said the theme is timely as Caribbean lifestyle and eating habits have been influenced by the United States. This food has thus found its way into our diets and overconsumption of certain products has resulted in the rise of non-communicable diseases in the Federation, with many of our citizens becoming ill and dying by these diseases. To improve healthy eating habits, the ministry suggests buying fresh fruit and vegetables instead of salty and sugary packaged foods to eat as snacks, buying meat from local farmers and replacing fatty desserts with healthier alternatives. In response to country reports that pointed to the need for increased public education and information sharing on matters related to the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, two meetings with key stakeholders were scheduled to be held in St. Kitts and Nevis. These meetings begin today. Lindis Harris, CSME Focal Point in St. Kitts and Nevis, said the meetings will serve to focus on the movement of skills and right of establishment regimes as grounded within the CSME. Free movement of skills includes the right of a CARICOM national to work without a work permit in any CARICOM member state participating in the CSME. The right of establishment allows CARICOM nationals the freedom to have the right to work as self-employed persons in the CSME. According to a CARICOM press release, these two rights still need clarification among key stakeholders and the meeting will serve to provide increased clarity. Participants were invited from within both the public and private sectors to attend the meetings at the Ministry of International Trade. In regional development, St. Lucia joined the global community in observing World Consumer Rights Day on March 15 under the theme Healthy Diets. Riani Isidore reports on the campaign to reduce health costs and save lives through preventative care. International Healthy Diet Campaign to draw attention to what they believe are the difficulties faced by consumers in choosing healthy diets. In solidarity with the global movement, the Ministry of Commerce has embarked on a series of community and school sensitization drives to educate the public on the benefits of healthy eating. 
The ministry says a healthier workforce will lead to increased national productivity. Of course, um, if you have a healthy population, uh, um, that will impact on your productivity. You can have people dying and that will definitely decrease your, your, work, uh, your, workforce, your workforce. And of course, we want to encourage people because um, you, you would probably know that a lot of people are falling sick at the workplace um, for one reason or the other. This year, Consumers International wants the global consumer to be wary of the potentially life-threatening consequences of a poor diet, they say, is linked to four of the leading causes of death worldwide, which includes overweight and obesity, high blood pressure, high blood glucose, and high cholesterol. The Commerce Ministry has engaged the Ministry of Health in the fight. We know that preventative care is the way to go now because right now we are spending a lot of money on dialysis for example and so we are encouraging people to eat healthy exercise and also have their blood pressure blood sugar tested okay. and the situation of diabetes and hypertension in St. Lucia is it severe yes it is severe and so we as a people need to re-examine how we are living and our lifestyle needs to change. The National Consumer Association says it is of utmost importance for St. Lucian consumers to always know their rights. The NCA is using this year's observance to advocate for better and healthier food options from retailers. And these rights are numerous. And one of them, as our theme for this year, is the right to healthy food. And we understand that once you have been exposed to a healthy diet, as an individual, you can benefit, and likewise, by extension, the government of today and the country at large. Consumer International says the global cost of unhealthy dieting costs U.S. $2 trillion annually. The Health and Commerce Ministries say government cannot continue to absorb the cost of dialysis. Therefore, they are encouraging citizens to adopt healthier lifestyles, which may not only save dollars, but also, more importantly, save the lives of loved ones. Rihani Isidor, HTS News Force. The United Nations mission in Haiti on Friday welcomed the formal proposal of a calendar for elections that have been delayed since 2011 and are scheduled to take place this year. The UN mission added that it looked forward to its prompt publication. The mission, known as MINUSTA, commended the Electoral Council for its extensive and all-inclusive consultations with political actors and its transparent approach. The UN and Haiti's international partners are working with the Haitian Electoral Council to organize fair, inclusive and transparent elections that will bring up the installation of the country's 50th legislature in January 2016 and a handover of power to a new ele elected president in February 2016. The UN mission is mandated by the Security Council to provide logistical support and technical expertise to assist Haiti's government to continue building the capacity of its rule of law institutions at the national and local level. Internationally, trailing in the polls before Tuesday's elections, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned that the right-wing government he leads could be voted out of office. Trailing in the polls before Tuesday's elections, Israel's Prime Minister has warned that the right-wing government he leads could be voted out of office. Benjamin Netanyahu called on supporters in Tel Aviv to help him secure a fourth term. He's counting on having a better chance of forming a coalition than his centre-left rivals. Several opinion polls suggest his Likud party would win fewer seats than the Zionist Union, whose co-leader Isaac Herzog took his campaign to Jerusalem's Western Wall. He's focused on the economy and is said to have benefited from voters' weariness with Netanyahu's obsession with security. But there are doubts as to whether Herzog would be able to find stable coalition partners. All eyes are on potential kingmaker Moshi Kalon. His centrist party, which has highlighted social issues, is tipped to win eight to ten seats. Both left and right have promised him a government post. Netanyahu repeated his offer on Sunday, but the former minister who split with Likud has rebuffed the proposal. More than 1,100 starving and sickly sea lion pups have washed up along California's coastline this winter. Rescue centers are working around the clock to try and rehabilitate hundreds of them to release them back into the wild. A crisis along California's coast. Hundreds of sea lion pups washing ashore sick and starving. Volunteers like Brennan Slavic trying to help before it's too late. 
not good. Tiny, uh, shivering, convulsing a little bit. He's really small. Slavik and dozens of other volunteers have been going through the drill several times a day. Since January, more than 1,100 pups have washed up, dying of starvation. At a year old, he should be somewhere around 60 pounds. He's about his birth weight, which is very scary. Unfortunately, this little guy didn't make it. But about 800 pups are still fighting for their lives at rescue centers along the coast. More than 120 of them are here at Pacific Marine Mammal Center in Laguna Beach. Well, we're definitely seeing an increase of numbers, and hysterically, this is five times than what we've normally had. Um, this time last year, we had about, about 48 in-house, and as of right now, we've had about 213 rescues. National marine scientists think warmer ocean temperatures around Southern California's Channel Islands, where the mothers give birth, are pushing food sources like anchovies and sardines further north. As mothers are gone longer in search of food, their babies suffer, striking out alone, out of desperation. The growth rate is very small. Pups are actually leaving the islands early, um, and because they're leaving with a, a really low tank of gas, when they get over here, they're showing up on the beach, basically, in the state that we're seeing now, which is pretty much starving to death. At the rescue centers, sickly pups are weighed, measured, and fed three times a day. The stronger ones get whole fish. The weaker ones are tube-fed a gruel of herring, pediolite, and vitamins. It's exhausting, round-the-clock work, but volunteers want to give these noisy little patients a chance to swim free again. Gillian Flackis, Associated Press, Laguna Beach, California. In the weather forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis, a weak low-level trough will be evident over the Leewards and British Virgin Islands today and tonight. This will result in a lighter flow over the islands. Notwithstanding the presence of the trough, no significant rainfall is expected due to low moisture levels. Today will be partly sunny to locally cloudy with brief passing morning showers. Greater periods of sunshine are expected by this afternoon. Tonight, conditions will be partly cloudy to cloudy with brief overnight showers. Winds will come from the east to east northeast at 10 to 16 miles per hour. Seas will be moderate to locally rough with heights of between 1.5 to 2.1 meters or 5 to 7 feet. A small craft advisory remains in effect for the waters mainly on the Atlantic side of the islands. Sea conditions are expected to improve by tomorrow with heights of 1.5 meters or 5 feet. The weather brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. I'm Ebony Brandon.